Welcome back to Gold Price. In this video, we'll be looking at the Ryzen 5 3600, which is about a year old, of which I haven't actually published a review. But this one's a little different because this unit is my second unit actually. The, the one I had before, I sold it off and I bought a new one recently. And it's a superb overclocker, of which I managed to reach 4.6 GHz and enter Windows and only to fail running the benchmarks test because I probably need better cooling. Even that time, I was using a 240mm AIO with voltage at about 1.3 and it does not work. However, 4.5GHz is stable with 1.275V core and the operating V core was about 1.23 and it ran fine with Blender test with the 240mm AIO cooler. If I were to switch to, let's say, the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 cooler, which is power cooler, the silent one, then the operating speed, I have to lower it to 4.4 and I can lower the voltage even further to say 1.225, 1.25, splendid stuff. So basically, it runs all this just fine. However, I can use the Pure Rock 2 and run at 4.5 GHz for gaming purpose. It will work just fine. Temperatures are within 80 degrees Celsius. Now let's dive into the benchmarks. In this video, I'm using the Astrock B550 Extreme 4 motherboard and as for my RAM, I'm using the XPG Specstrix D60G 3600CL14 kit. In Blender, the 4.5GHz overclock Ryzen 5 3600 with a 3600MHz CL14 XPG D60 kit shaved almost half a minute off the render time when compared to stock settings. In DaVinci Resolve, I tried converting my 3-minute 4K video to 4K and Full HD and again the 4.5GHz all-core overclock reduced the render time significantly. As for 1440p gaming paired with an RTX 2080 Super graphics card, the overclock Ryzen 5 system matches even the Core i9-10900K at 5.1GHz in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In World War Z, the overclock system stands around halfway point between stock settings and a powerful Core i9 system. In Assassin's Creed, the performance across the systems is very similar. By now, you should realize how great a value is the AMD system. In Far Cry 5, the pattern remains with the AMD system matching closely with the Intel Core i9 system. Likewise, in The Division 2, with the Intel system being just a little better on 1% lows. Lastly, there's Dota 2, which is the only benchmark where the AMD systems are far behind the Intel system. A reminder that Intel processors will push frame rates far better at a cost. If you are playing Dota 2 on an AMD system, you can consider going a few notches down in the choice of graphics card and save some money. Alright, we come to the end of this video. If I were to review this processor one year ago, it gets a gold badge. Now, I have no other higher batch to go, so I'm giving it a double gold batch. Still, a uh, really a processor that's really worth the price, even at this point of time. With the new processors looming, I don't know when, but probably towards the end of the year. So if you need a processor, this is a good one. If you like to overclock, this is a good one too. Of course, I cannot guarantee that you will get a really, really nice one like what I have here, because as you know silicon lottery is there but nevertheless good stuff as always thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one bye bye